Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Ash and today I'm doing a quick review for Theatre Rhythm Final Bar Line on PlayStation. Now this game is basically a rhythm game that is set in the world of Final Fantasy. Now, this is the fifth entry in the Theatre Rhythm series. There's been a Theatre Rhythm Final Fantasy. There was one called Curtain Call. There was a Dragon Quest one. And there was an arcade exclusive one called Final Fantasy All-Star Carnival. Now, this game sees you basically play through a variety of songs from beloved Final Fantasy and other Square Enix franchises. Basically, a sort of Guitar Hero-esque style, but we've added sort of RPG elements. Now, in the game, you basically control a party of characters from the Final Fantasy series. And what you do is you will pick a game at the beginning of the game. You get to sort of unlock one of the Final Fantasy games to get started with when you unlock it you unlock a selection of characters and they basically form your party now when you complete songs they get xp they level up they get better health better attack defense all that sort of stuff they'll learn skills which can be used and they obviously can also use items which you will collect from completing missions and from defeating enemies and stuff like that. Now, as you can see on the screen right now, it does look very busy, but you're basically controlling the music input. So on the right hand side or the bottom, depending on uh, what sort of level you're on, you'll see the circles and you have to basically push the right input at the right time. Now, all the combat and the skills and everything are basically done automatically. It's very much like a sort of like an auto runner RPG in that sense. Now, control wise, I quite like this game because when it comes to pressing the inputs, you don't have to press specific buttons all the time. So um, they're all color coded. So like green is hold down, red is press, yellows are sort of ones you have to flick the thumbsticks in a certain direction. But for the holding down ones and the one-off presses and stuff like that, you can press pretty much any of the buttons on the controller. So it's great for those people that may suffer with like accessibility and stuff like that. And it also means I get quite bad cramps when I'm playing the same game on the same pad for quite a long time. So I can sort of mix up what buttons I'm pressing to sort of give my fingers a break, which I, I was very, very grateful of. Now, I've never played any of the other games in the series. It was never something I was even aware of until I saw this game. Now, for sort of honesty, I'm not the biggest Final Fantasy fan. I love Final Fantasy IX, and I liked World of Final Fantasy, and I like Kingdom Hearts, and I've played a lot of the uh, Final Fantasy XIV MMO recently. But it's not my sort of go-to franchise. I was never sort of massively like in love with it it's not one that apart from final fantasy 9 has any sort of nostalgia to me but the demo of this came out i played it on the switch and i really enjoyed it so when it did come out i did pick it up but i picked it up on the playstation mainly because trying to play this on the switch with the tiny little um like thumbsticks and stuff like and the tiny buttons was near impossible for my like normal sized hands whereas playing it on the playstation controller is an absolute dream now um the game itself features a variety of different modes so you have like the main story mode and that is basically where you'll play through a variety of the game soundtracks to completion and then you will eventually take on um, the big bad bosses one, basically, once you've completed a certain amount. There isn't much in the way of story, but that is the basic premise of it. Now, the game also features a sort of free play song mode where you can pick any song you've either downloaded as part of the DLC or you've played and completed as part of the sort of single player story mode. So completing all them does give you a reason to go back. And also when you complete the songs, you complete all of them in a 
franchise, like a game, you normally unlock an extra bonus song as well that like can be played in free play mode. Now, this game also has a multiplayer mode. I haven't played a lot of that. I've mainly just been playing it single player and really enjoying myself. But there is a multiplayer mode in there which can accommodate up to four players at once, which is pretty awesome. Now, the game itself is packed with 385 carefully selected songs from the franchise. This doesn't include all of the DLC and the extra bonus tracks if you bought the digital deluxe edition so if you buy the digital deluxe edition you get 27 extra tracks included out of the gate plus season pass one now if you buy the standard edition you just get the 385 songs which is w well enough like i say there's a ton of it and then there's also a premium digital deluxe edition which includes the season pass two and three as well as everything else in the deluxe edition now, I went for the Deluxe Edition mainly because I wanted the Season Pass 1 just to see what it was like, and I wanted to get the extra music tracks. And honestly, the game is fantastic. So, as part of the Season Pass, they've been putting in songs from other franchises as well. So, you've got stuff from like The World Ends With You, you've got Saga, you've got Nier, you've got Live A Live or Live Alive, however you pronounce it. It's and they're bringing them out basically sort of every couple of weeks. And there's another pack coming out on April the 12th as well with even more songs. So there's so much content. I've been playing for about 10 plus hours at time of recording this, if not longer. And I'm only about 120 songs, 130 songs into playing through all of them. But I finished the story. All I'm doing now is sort of trying to complete every song at least once. But I tend to go on and I tend to play for like, half an hour at a time do a handful of stories or play through one game on the uh, the story mode and finish that basically now when you are playing the story mode you will play through the songs from start to finish as if you're progressing through like a quest line and when you play each song each song has its own unique sort of quest to complete now these can be things like um do this level without losing any health do this with a certain member in your party kill so many enemies in combat in this song defeat the boss character of the level within 25 seconds stuff like that so it gives you a reason to replay these levels as well because if you don't complete them it doesn't really matter um you, you still progress on but if you do complete them you do get extra collectible cards and there is like a collectible card sort of library which is something you can sort of work to to complete basically for your trophies and stuff like that now this game is really fantastic it plays really well i could gush about it for hours but i won't bore you with it too much but all i can say is as a fan of final fantasy 9 i was really into it um what i didn't um expect was that i would eventually end up playing it as much as i did and really getting me into final fantasy like i want to play some of the final fantasy games now i've been playing them um looking at listening to all the songs and stuff like that looking at all the different characters that are available and the enemies and stuff like that it's a very simple game to play but difficult to master so you can basically get critical good bad missed stuff like that on your uh, inputs you basically get a full chain like a perfect chain if you don't miss anything in each of the songs and there's also multiple difficulties so if you play through on the standard and you want it harder you can turn it up multiple difficulties to give yourself a bit of a challenge and get more xp and more like card collectibles and stuff like that um, to unlock more of them in the collection one other thing i do like there is also these alternate sort of video versions of levels you've probably seen it in this review video in the background uh, where basically it has video footage from like the cutscenes and stuff of some of the games in the series and instead of it being like side scrolling it's like it comes downwards vertically and they're quite nice just because you like you get to see a bit of the actual in-game sort of footage and stuff which is cool and very nostalgic for fans of those games now i highly recommend this game like i say it's out right now on playstation 4 obviously playable on ps5 as well and on 
Nintendo Switch. It's priced at $49.99 for the Standard Edition and $74.99 for the Deluxe and $94.99 for the like digital premium ultra deluxe version. The season pass that you can buy extra is eleven ninety nine, so I'm assuming all the other season passes will be about around that price as well. And if you buy the standard edition and you do want to upgrade to the digital deluxe edition to get those extra music packs and stuff like that, you can for twenty four ninety nine as well, which basically makes it exactly the same price as if you were buying it fully, which is nice because some companies will charge you a lot more if you buy the upgrade later on instead of buying it in a bundle at launch and i like that square haven't done that but it is a shame this isn't on xbox i do hope it comes to xbox in the future i'm definitely going to try this on the other systems as well there's one on the uh, 3ds so i'm hopefully going to pick that up and have a play soon but like i say i am hours into this game having loads of fun with it there's so much to do i love that i can like mix up the different classes in my team so you can have healers so if you if you miss a uh, a button press you take damage basically that's you failing in combat but you have healers which can sort of uh, resurrect you like your health you've got summon stones as well that you pick up and they summon like massive monsters and stuff basically how final fantasy where you summon the creatures and stuff you can uh, do that as well and they pop up on screen they look absolutely awesome you can customize your uh, moogle that follows you around and you can customize like your airship that drops you off at the beginning of some of the stages as well and you just unlock them by playing and you'll find them on like when you defeat enemies and stuff like that so there's loads of content here i highly recommend it I prefer it on the PlayStation over the Switch, even though it's exactly the same game, but just playing it with a PlayStation controller is just so much more comfortable. Unless you've got a Switch Pro controller, then you'll probably be absolutely fine. But that's that for this video, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and we'll see you soon for more content. Bye for now.